Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on October 12, 2023. You are live with Doug and Quinston and our compadre, TJ. We are here to answer your questions, check your workflows, workflows, and generally just make sure that you get the best out of Time Bolt. I don't know how busy it's going to be today with our callers. How are you doing, D? Doing fine. Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours. I just clicked the thing that <laughs> I don't remember which uh, Zoom this was. Sorry. That's, that's all right. Do you edit with Time Bolt? No. You don't? I don't remember what it is. This is the best best kind of call. You, you don't remember? What yeah. do, you, do you make video? For uh, okay. YouTube. For YouTube. What do you use to What do you use to cut down your timelines? Do you use any of these rapid video editing tools? I started using Descript. I was trying to learn DaVinci and it was just taking too long. I'm using Descript. And and what, did you get a chance uh, to try Time Bolt before using Descript or is it? I believe so. Let me open it up. I'm just logging in. Or you're a lifetime member or subscriber? I don't remember. Well, it goes through and it, it, it works based on audio audio waveforms. It goes in and finds the dead air and silences and cuts cuts it up uh, on your computer. What type of content do you make? Just Is it just strictly for YouTube scripted? Uh, right now, and we want to do, we want to start doing YouTube lives and then cut that down into shorts. Right now, we're mostly doing shorts. We just started like recently, which is why I'm all over the place right now. Are you recording for long form and then doing shorts or are you recording on the cell phone knowing that it's going to be a minute? long we record on a desk uh, on our what i call a desktop but our mac for shorts and we just do it in the the aspect ratio we're doing specific shorts that'll be connected with longer videos and when you capture when you capture these shorts you're talking about in a vertical format on your computer how, how what are you using to capture my husband, I think, uses ScreenFlow. And with this script, they just bought a podcasting Squadcast or something like that. We were going to use Squadcast for like the YouTube lives and the, the podcasting. We were debating on that. Going back, like, are you talking about, it's kind of like a Riverside, kind of, kind of like a Riverside service. They just like in the past month bought them to provide that service. Well, I, I can, I can tell you when, when it comes to, when it comes to making shorts, you can, I don't know how well that happens inside Descript. We have a pretty unique workflow flow. It's going to be about speed when you're making shorts. Share my screen. It sounds like you're working with screen flow. This is something that, that I captured uh, with my iPhone. We're also working on a capture, a capture piece that does vertical videos that you can just capture right inside time bolt and it auto pushes into time bolts so that you're saving quite a few clicks this is what time bolt looks like you basically put this on 1.5x is better and you're able to go through there are things in life where longer and cut up cut out today it's common you can cut out scenes do those types of things inside time bolt you can punch in and to be asked oh, that was totally unflattering you can punch in zoom around with with quick keys and then what we typically like to do is Go down here and hit, you can activate turbo mode, okay? Because time just doesn't disappear like it does in transcripts. You can actually speed up time in between, right? You can fast forward silences as well, but you can also fast forward the entire video. We typically go to activate turbo mode, put this on like 1.125X, and then we do this thing called export clips to a folder, okay? And you export these clips, and what happens is it exports clips to a folder like takes all of those cuts that you just made inside time bolt and makes them each an individual clip now what happens is when you open a cap cut now what happens when you open up cap cut you just basically drag in uh, your folder and it sequentially orders all of your cuts and you pull them down here to this timeline now imagine all of your cuts are already made inside cap cuts so it's not like you just arrive with long, one long video or one video you now have to go back in and cut to do transitions and stuff this thing's ready it makes the transcripts inherently more accurate when you apply the free transcripts inside CapCut. And it's super easy to now go in there and just add effects and transitions because it's already, boom, right there. It's already made. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can explain yourself. And everyone's uh, workflows when it comes to shorts that uh, I think as, as you get into making those at scale, I, I, I have a hard time imagining you're going to be able to do that any faster. And you won't be able to do that faster outside in, in the script. Uh, this is, this is definitely a workflow for you to take a look at. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the, the live, streams uh, or webinars do, do you find the script like when when you when you record for the script do you find that scripted video versus unscripted video is like two different animals when you're talking about text editing the script well what we do is we do kind of a combination of we since we know what we're talking about we just kind of have bullets and you can kind of clearly see the arms i think that so far in the script I don't know if it works that well. For some reason, it doesn't see spaces if there's like a sound or something going on in the background. It's almost like it has to be dead silent. There's some type of sensitivity where my husband thinks a lot. He's an engineer. I feel like it's not forever, but three, four seconds is a long time and the script won't see that at all. So then I have to go in and edit it anyway. Transcripts are just inherently inaccurate. <laughs> like we're talking about, when you're talking about transcripts, you're talking about down to like the letter word token, right? The millisecond. Because milliseconds count. As you can see here, you're not, 
always going to be right at the very beginning of a sentence or at the end of a sentence because it's based on sound wave detection versus transcription based editing right now transcriptions we do add so when it comes to your longer format content why we would recommend so this is kind of like one of our our longer uh, live office hours we're talking about a minute and 17 seconds now what you can see here Okay, not only do we catch like the sounds, it's accurate enough to create a design aesthetic. You don't have to go back and then change the XML and go like at, through every little sentence. You catch these sounds like this in here. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Like no one needs that in the playback. I just said that, that's funny, right? Like that no one needs that in the playback. We have this, we have, we're able to do because we're tracking time, not transcripts. We are able to ignore detection shorter than a specific sound. So something like a mic strike, a cough, a random um, or excited utterance in between a longer sentence. It doesn't, it's not going to just leave that in there that you have to go find it and then remove it. That's a setting that's we, that we used. Now, our base cut. When you talk to your husband, our base cut is you can't get more accurate than sound wave detection. That's like the base cut. That's like 80% of your cuts are nothing but dead air, right? And the rest are, are other types of cuts. Our base cut is inherently the most accurate you can get. Now, we do have um check. With our um check, you're able to actually go in there and specify it. Everybody kind of has their own unique word tick phrases. We've got we've got this down to where any word combinations, ums, ahs, the combination of ums and ahs, like if yours is like I'm saying, like mine is, or, or and so, or um you're able to create your own unique word tick phrase. It's not just some predefined list that you can't do anything with, right? And that misses a lot of the stuff. And a lot of the filler words are combined. You typically say, and so, or um, and. These are, that's just naturally what you do in, in, in natural language. You hit split timeline, turn off the words. This is the only time that you uh, use the actual transcript. We use actual transcription technology. Okay, and that goes above our top base cut. Here, I can just do flip timeline if you want to see exactly what you're cutting out. It did very well. And um, and uh, what it's called. And, uh, yes. and so, uh, we took this down by, uh, we made this file shorter by 15 minutes. We, you can see our time bolt, our words per minute went from 162 words per minute to 227 by removing the filler words, removing the dead air. And at this point in time, this is what you're also not going to be able to do with the script. Okay. You're also not going to be able to do this. You're going to go through, we just basically learned three quick keys. Okay. S O B that S O B son of a bitch, right? <laughs> you can remember that real easy. S splits the timeline, okay? And you see how it created a split right there? So you don't need to like use a key and go key in here, okay? S splits the timeline. O turns the current scene off. So we'll turn this scene off, okay? And skips to the next scene. I, I, I have, did you see that, Quinston? And it skips to the next scene. Oh, so you can rapidly turn off scenes, okay? If, if you're, and now if I'll you're going cut, through. Cut up. All right, let me go ahead and get started. Welcome to time. And see how I already listened to that part? Instead of me having to stop the playhead, go back. I can click above the bar right here, of course, okay? But I don't want to do that. I hit the B key, which stands for back cut. So as I'm previewing at 1.5x, you put this at 1.5. It's welcome to time office hours. On welcome to, I see, I just hit the B key. Okay, here, I'll show you, I'll show you one more time. See right here? Imagine like you're listening, you it's either scripted or unscripted and you don't want to, you're like, oh, I just said that sentence. You can back cut without stopping the key. Cut up. All right, let me go ahead and get started. Welcome to time. Welcome to time office hours. See how that cut out that, that previous part right there? So now you don't ever even have to stop the playhead. This is actually faster than any NLE you're going to use either as well you've got punch in punch around stuff like that okay with just the letter p you don't have to learn keyframes you don't have to go into other menus these are quick keys and then the big time the other big time savers after you after you do this and you're putting it uploading it to youtube chapterizing your content is going to be critical uh, if you're talking 30 minutes you've got to put chapter markers in there it just like keeps you there and no one else has this what you do is it's the only thing that you you basically use your keyboard for you right click okay and you type in this is chapter one you can it can be as long as you want okay and you hit mark cut let's say you're going through and say this chapter two mark cut this can be as long a description as you want chapter three you can write a damn paragraph in here but now imagine i've got 20 chapters right i'm doing this on the first pass the first time i'm listening to it i'm categorizing it i don't have to go back and listen to it because i like people i, I typically put my shows on activate turbo mode again this is all entirely unique this is about speed you've got 1.125x okay that's what i typically like to speak at that means you're speaking about 12 percent faster your show is going to be about 12 percent faster and what i do here is now i go down and i hit download markers text file okay see this thing this is the beautiful thing is made to copy and paste right into the description of YouTube. But you don't have to go back and re-listen to your show. You don't have to then go back and try and find exactly where the jump cut happens. This is all done on the first pass, which will save you alone to save you the amount of time watching it again. You export it here, but you can still download Marker's text file. As long as you're not taking out or adding time to the show, 
okay, you can export this and, and do all the stuff you need to do in DaVinci Resolve or, or Premiere, as long as you're not adding or taking away time, right? That you do all your cut work in Time Bolt, and then you just use those chapter markers. Again, that's a it's a, it's a huge time savings. If you this. add like stuff in DaVinci or one of the other tools, you have to like then I uh, assume re-upload it here to get the markers. Can you ask that question more time? Like you were saying, well, you were saying like, for instance, as long as you don't add time, of course, they'll be accurate. But if you do add time, you have to re-upload it then over here. When you're talking about adding time, there's a difference between, hey, I need to add a five second bumper, bumper, bumper up at the very front, at the very beginning versus, hey, I need to sprinkle in five seconds here, five seconds here. Like if you're just adding up five seconds up front, it's definitely worth it to still do your markers inside Time Bolt and just add five seconds to whatever that text file says. I'm not just saying, hey, edit inside Time Bolt because to, to do the markers. It is truly faster once you learn the keys SOB to just go through this like a Ginsu knife oh, because you really don't have to stop the playhead, kind of like lower right. res Cisco recordings that you're doing. Well, the, the Cisco Web the Cisco WebEx uh, defaults to uh, 360. I have mine set up to 360. I have mine set up. Touching keys or anything like that. It's if something we're coming, if you were to come up here and this was just you a bunch of that. gibberish. I just do that. So that's like whatever that Whatever see, I just cut out videos, all three. Not... See, I cut out all of those just like that. Anything that you listen to, you're listening to it at like 1.5x speed, and just use your B and O key. The first thing you want to do is run your run your um check, which is your automation, and then go through and splice up your timeline. And as you're splicing up your timeline, add your chapter markers, and and faster than it took you to record live your show live, you'll be able to have a fully cut base cut with chapter eyes for YouTube, including punch and speed up silences. You can do fast forward silences as well. But you can come down here and say, hey, any Thing. let's say you're doing mouse clicks or some like demonstrating something where you want to show not tell you can either automate this or just leave it at zero and come up here and double cl and click this bar and it speeds it up by two three or four x you could still see the action just four times as fast which is again people see that and you're layering in time right and they appreciate that when mm -hmm. when they know things are, are faster than real life that's uh that's why i would definitely use time bolt over descript and i understand why people use descript they've been around for a while but when it when it comes to speed and then we're also shoring up our ability to capture video as well now, if you're making video like you do for youtube there's going to be instances where you got to give creative feedback on something maybe somebody asked you to explain something you don't want to write a five paragraph email but do you ever make just kind of like one-to-one -one videos no but what well, we used to it's just after covid i don't know people stop talking to each other <laughs> it's bad for people is good for video right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way it's been and and, and when you do like sometimes it is about saving time. We've got a screen recorder where you can record. See, I click that. We've got, you can record in standard, quick and small or in HD quality. And after you save your file, you can auto push this right into Time Bolt. Okay, completely hands off. Send in a loom video, but doesn't suck to watch. It's real easy to send. It's, it's fast. It's easy to hit record and send a loom. The hard part is, is watching it on the other end with all the dead air in it. It's not fun to p make piss off your friends. And My husband uses OBS. Is that I saw OBS up there? Is that it was OBS multicam? I can I can do anything with this. Like, I, like there's my this is my camera that I'm using right now through a zoom, right? I can, I can use, if I wanted to add like a green screen effect or something like that, I could just pipe in this OBS as a, as a input here. Oh, okay. Got it. And, and uh, we're working on, we, you got your uh, single audio input and then you can do multi-screen. This is where the kind of the innovation is the standard quick and small. Then once you record, once you record in this, you, um, it auto kicks into time bolt. Imagine this once, once you actually create that video, Again, go down, activate turbo mode because you're going to be rendering inside time. Well, remember this is kind of a one-to-one -one video message or one to few. You hit this, put this on, keep it on 1.125 and see this little bad boy right here. You click this. Uh, now this is a 45 minute video in here, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that, but you click this very, very fast. Okay. Like very fast. It renders a video kicks it up to a web server and puts it on an unlisted link. If for example, you had to send a link, it was through like a form or you couldn't upload a video or you know, actually add a video attachment, you can create a Loom link, just like a Loom link right there, but it's watchable. If you've got that subscription, you don't need that one either. But that is, but that is, but that's time bold. I would definitely invite you to you know, try the 30 day subscription. You just got a by accident, uh, a 20 minute orientation about how to use this thing super fast. <laughs> We've got a 30 day money back. I would probably will change the way you edit. Okay, I'll check my email and see where I signed up for it. I did. But but I just don't know if I use it. And, and, and personally, I would I, I would really like the feedback. But it's it's always nice having a customer that was already with another. With an, no one wants to learn new software, right? And it's kind of a pain in the ass. There's no doubt about that. And but time bolt is something you can learn in 20 minutes, not three weekends locked away in a room, right? But with this, we believe when it comes to speed in these long format videos, people would opt for speed over going through and spending another two or three times what it took them to actually capture that content. Are you open for Q&A right now? Yes, yes, Tom, how, how are you doing? Oh.
it's, it's I'm nice doing great, Tom. Thanks very okay. much. Um, let me, I, uh, let, hold on, Tom. Let me, let me finish this with D real quick, okay? One, one quick, uh, D is, or, do you have any further questions that I can answer? No, I'm sending you a, a couple chats and stuff like that, looking at the previous emails that I was getting. Looks like I signed up maybe in uh, September, but we just recently launched. That might be why there's kind of a, a skip. We weren't doing anything at the time. We were... You've got monthly and annual subscriptions, a 30-day money-back guarantee. And you, you've joined us on the call today, and I think you're going to be pretty quick to get set up. Just install it on your computer. It's lo run local on your computer, so you don't have to wait for files to upload unless you're running a check. And that should be a pretty short process for you. Okay, I am going to try it. It has a lot of features that, because the script, there's a lot of things that it says it does that it doesn't. And it actually took me a lot longer to get used to because some of the features just weren't working the way they said. Like, I still can't do a bunch in and bunch out. And it seems like it should be pretty easy, but I wasted a lot of time, maybe a couple weeks there, trying to get used to the software. The SOB, I appreciate your feedback. SOB are the three keys that you need, right? Now, remember, there's two. the last two, the last two besides SOB, there's punch, okay? hit P, the letter P on your keyboard, boom, 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 right? And as you're punching in, you can hit, what are you on a Mac or PC? Mac. So you're going to hit option and your arrows, option your arrow keys, okay? Because look, I can not only, I can punch in and specify where I want it to go. It saves me from having to do this. You, you could do this, right click, okay? And go in and say, okay, punch in 75 and I want it to go here, okay? I'm just teaching you, you don't need to do that. P, and then uh, alter option, your arrow keys. And that just makes it so fast. Just, it oh, just... you can tell her where to find the shortcuts if she forgets. Sure, to. sure. And there's keyboard shortcuts right here. There's a button at the top. Uh... Yeah, there's. It's... Oh, okay. There's keyboard shortcuts. You like you'll you'll get. I'm trying to get it to where like when you first get in, you're like no. Like, what are your main keys? Because all of these buttons, I swear to God, even though they look innocuous and like little, they all do something, okay? Quinston does not yeah. put anything on this software that doesn't really do something big. And, and in between, you're going to find, where I, I kind of have to go back in and update some of these, but you'll be able to find some of these, like, see these little question marks? You click on these question marks, you click on these question marks, and a video pops up that gives a, like, just a tutorial, right? And then the last thing I wanted to show you real quick, okay, before we go, after you get done, after you get done with going from long format, you want to go to, you want to, uh, I hit clear markers. You want to go to do some kind of shorts. You can also now, you click the letter M, it adds a marker. And as you can see, it says mark duration right here, okay? See that little thing right there? Another big thing that you need to know about, mark duration, right? But as I'm going through, I'm like, oh, I like this. I like that. Maybe there's somebody who's giving me some kind of giving us a good review or something or a bad review, whatever. We're going through, we hit these mark cuts and I'm highlighting these key scenes in a 40 minute deal. It looks like my mark duration is 22 seconds. I can keep adding scenes of what's important. Okay. And if I want to make a short, what I do is check this out. This is, this is new. The ability, uh, Tom, this is new. This is new stuff. I'm just, uh, I'm just doing this to uh, make a point here. Okay. Let's just add up enough of these scenes to go over one minute. Now I got one minute and 10 seconds. Oh, okay. I got one minute and 10 seconds. See down here, a short can only be a minute long. What I'm going to do is I do keep only mark cuts. I'm basically going from a 45 minute video down to some you know, highlight scene. I can do this as many times as I want, but there's, let's say it's a specific topic. When I do keep only mark cuts, it only keeps. And quarters are much more sophisticated. Than I'm marked. Now I can go down. It's going, now I can go down. It's going to be a minute and 10 seconds long. That's obviously 10 seconds longer than what I, what I needed it to be at to hit a short. But everything is important to me. Once again, what do we do? We go to activate turbo mode, right? Now, up here, instead of just saying, hey, I want to talk 12% faster, you say, hey, I want to fit within 60 seconds. That means it's going to take that minute and 10 second long video, and it's going to come, it's going to basically speed it up by 17.5%, okay? You're not going to sound like a chipmunk for some un magical reason. In time, you don't sound like a chipmunk when you speed up time. It isn't the same as hitting 1.5x on YouTube. That's a whole different thing. This is like baked in. Now, what I would do at this point, if I was making a short, I would do export clips to a folder, right? Remember, like, like I showed you that cap cut thing? Now, all of a sudden, I'm exporting those to a folder, pulling those into CapCut, and in CapCut, that's all nice and cut up already now. Okay, when I drop that folder of, of cut clips in, and when it when you do the automatic transcriptions for their, for their captions, it you're not sitting there going, oh, well, where's this thing coming in at? I need to go uh, over here, and it's not already done. That's another 45 minutes to an hour and a half saved of time. Since I had to go through, we were a little bit over. We were, my husband was at a minute 45. Actually, I had to shave off like that 45 minutes and that was kind of brutal. Speeding up certain sections, 
removing like whole sections. Now you you don't want to like you, you can't take a two. I'm saying you don't want to take like a, mi a minute. Yeah. Like, five compressing it. <laughs> Forty five you can't speed up. That's too much. Be, like, speaking like two times x like that's super fast, right? But I'm saying like if you can get your stuff to around ten seconds, like a, yeah, out, like, plus outside, or, plus or minus ten seconds is fine. Like, Forty five yeah. seconds is way too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not when miracle workers like, here. One hundred three. It just got brutal. I was like, I've done it. Yeah, one hundred five, one hundred three. You can speed it up. It's fine. But D, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the questions. Is there anything else I can help you with right now? No, I'm gonna try today because I'm. Uh, I have like eight shorts I need to finish. He's kind of cranking them out. But then some. Some of them aren't that long. Maybe it'll help with my workflow. I'm kind of the one that's holding up things. Once you get your first video, like how you record into Timebolt and working well. Like all the rest of them will come easy, right? Like you're just you're you're when you're doing it for the first time, you're gonna need to make sure your audio is 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 decent, right? It's it's showing up okay here that you didn't record it in a variable frame rate that your file works first inside time. So you have um, I don't know much about editing the J cuts, L cuts, and different transition things. All that stuff we like that is creative decisions that we've left for your. NLEs or cap cut. Look at cap cut. They're like, they, you just drop in trends. We're never going to be something like that. Ours is more about speed. You want to do L cuts and J cuts and add B roll. It's about you get in here and you cut your base timeline up, right? And then once you export that, you can do like XML. You can export XML into uh, DaVinci Resolve and then add your B roll and base and all that stuff much faster and, and much faster than what you're going to be able to do. Okay. I would also think of the script. Okay. We separate those two functions out. And DaVinci Resolve is free too right you're essentially cap cut but you're mm -hmm. essentially time bold is the only thing you're really paying for yeah, if, okay. if you're gonna do shorts I, I recommend using cap cut it's way easier. yeah way easier generally in like a day you know what i'm saying <laughs> but i don't know every like i just drop it in transitions i can make a cool video within three hours learning it inside uh cap cut after i time bolted it but you're not i swear to god you go into cap cut and you try and tom i don't know if you Tom, do you make shorts? I'll, uh, I'll I'll get into that in a little bit. I do shorts, I do movies, TV shows, uh, working right now for a couple of YouTubers. Got a few questions just about workflow, which I can explain in a few moments. But just to echo what you've just said, that time bolt's really, really easy. It, it definitely saves a heck of a lot of time. I love what you just showed about the shorts, especially about taking something that's a minute 10, shrinking it down to fit that minute slot. Uh, the only bad thing that I can see is it only encourages me to make minute 10 shorts. <laughs> it only encourages what? <laughs> It only make longer shorts. To make my shorts a little longer, right? Cram more stuff in there. Yeah. Well, when, when you're ready, I got a few questions for you. Perfect, perfect. Are, are you good? Are you good to go then? Awesome. Well, it was nice. It was nice talking to you, Tom. Tom, how are you doing? Is there a way you could turn your camera on? Camera on, or I'm I'm at a hotel right now, just uh, in, in Europe, and we've got really really slow internet. <laughs> it's been driving us nuts. So if I turn the camera on, I, I, it'll probably disconnect me. The the same chances are there's interesting stuff on. going on. <laughs> I wasn't expecting yeah, it. Yeah, D's well, on it. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even know what show she was showing up with. She's like, a, she's using some other software. She's like, I don't actually use Time Bolt. What is this? <laughs> I was like, well, come on in, man. It's That's funny. awesome. That's so funny. That's awesome. Right, right now, I'm uh, I'm working for a couple of YouTubers. One in particular who is probably what I would call the um king drives me nuts. He also ends every sentence in silence. Right, so he rolls off his words almost to, to silence. Instead of a nice, good, hard end to the word, you cuts, and you can barely yeah. hear what you think. But the problem that I'm running into with Tumble, I've got a camera A, I've got a camera B. I they they they're terrible at shooting their audio. I've usually got to go in and to bring that into like Adobe Enhance, right? Podcast Enhance it seems to be the fastest way of just dealing with it. I then go into Time Bolt with uh, whichever camera was the longest take. Everything's synchronized inside Premiere. I run through Time Bolt. I spend a lot of time in Time Bolt just sort of trimming things up and, and trying to make sure that all the edits are happening at the right place. I go back into Premiere import the, uh, the JSON through your uh, Premiere extension. extension. And what I've been finding is a couple of things. One, I end up with some audio clips on the audio only track that are one frame out of sync, one frame advanced. Okay. Not normally a big problem if everything is out, but it's a real big problem when it's just a few clips that are out. That can take me quite a long time to go in and fix because I've got to do every single one of those by hand, right? And we sync them. Knowing that they're a frame out, they're all a frame out. It's not like they're two frames or three frames or random. The other problem that I've been finding lately, I don't know if it was with an update or what have you. Uh, last night I went through Time Bolt. I edited a, a 40 minute or a 44 minute piece down to about 33 minutes. Uh, brought that all into Premiere and all of the edits are off. The, the audio out and the audio ins are trimmed. Um, it's trimming the starts of words and the ends of words. So I'm now having to go back into Premiere and then we re-edit the edits 
which is kind of driving me nuts. Everything that is all wrong. No, that's. Do, are you? Tell gonna, me about. <laughs> you should not be having to do any of that in Premiere, right? Like just none of that. Well, that that was the idea of buying Time Ball, right? Is I, I really wanted to spend less time editing. I love the fact that I can uh, I can rip through a forty minute piece in probably about an hour and a half um, through Time Ball. It, it instantly does the edits on its own. But because I'm trying to trim out arms and all that kind of stuff, it, it takes a, a little bit of manual effort, which is probably not quite your normal user case scenario. But that yeah. said, so, it still takes a heck of a lot of time. Let's start with the second. I, I think the first thing we can sort out, the second uh, problem, I want to know more about that because that seems like a nightmare. I, um, so, I don't know what to tell you about that. I, I actually thought it was me and I was going crazy. When I when I got everything in the premiere and started uh, working with the files this morning, I was I was just absolutely in shock. So what happened exactly? Like, well, you edited it in Time Bolt and what yeah, made the time cuts? Bolt, I used Time Bolt to do, uh, to do the edit. I can uh, I can fast play through Time Bolt. It's, it's great. I can go forward, Correct. backwards, back and stuff. It's fantastic. Brought the JSON file into Premiere, applied it to each track. So everything synchronizes. There's no problem with synchronicity or anything like that or synchronization. Yeah, it's just the, the edit point that I've made, they're just trimmed. Trimmed? Uh, what, what do you mean by trimmed? Like, are, are they not at the well, right place? Let's, are they out let's of... Say, no. Let's say the out straight. point is uh, a third of a second too soon. Uh, I, I and, think... And, uh... And the end so, point is a third of a second too yeah. late. One rule to follow when you're doing the extension thing is that you don't start with the longest file. You start with the file, the audio should come from the file that starts first. It's not the longest file that you start with. It's the one that starts first. I, I don't start... understand what you mean by starts first. Let me show you. I'm just going to, because I think or that's what's happening. Are you talking about uh, the camera roll? Which which camera started rolling first? No, uh, the audio. So let me just uh, give you an example. If I'm in Premiere, for example, let's say I have three vid videos. These are some random videos. They're, they're not, not in sync, they're not multi-cam, but just random videos. Okay. Sure. Now, these are the videos. In this video, as you can see, the longest video is actually this one, right? Yeah. But let's say that I sync them all together, okay? And when I sync them, so these are like this, when I sync them, this video is here. But this is what happens when I sync them. Now, sure. if you observe, the second track is the longest file. When you use Time Bolt, you're not going to put this audio in Time Bolt. You're going to put this one. Because oh, this I, I yeah. see what you're talking about. Yes, that is what I'm doing. When you say it's out of sync, L let me it, it, it shouldn't be. Like, the only way I can help you here is that if, if I have those files and I can test them. Is there any way that you can, like, send them to me or make them smaller i would have no problem sending it directly to you it's just that it's not something that i can share publicly is there like can you okay, okay here let's do this um, let's do this can, can you share your screen by chance yeah let me see if i can find yeah. And, and the reason I'm asking, Quinston, is because I, I think we're, it's about how you capture, okay? Like, how are you capturing this content so that's going out of sync? Is is it possible it's variable frame rate? No, I, I didn't ask him to share his screen because he couldn't even share his video. That's why oh, <laughs> like, he can't. Because <laughs> I can help you out if you can share a screen, but you said your video is, you don't have any bit rate. That's why I said send over the files. But what, what does cause a sync issue in all of these platforms is if you capture in a variable frame rate. I don't know if this is a, like a, it sounds multi-cam file. Yeah, what, what they're doing, uh, it's, it's not going to happen. It's going to... There's it's, one more a way in which I can, I can help you. I can send you, uh, I can send you a project, Winston, if you want. Before that, I, I, I do want to show you something that you you probably sure. haven't used in Time Board, which is new, and that is the XML sequence. I, I don't know if you've used XML sequence. I've so only if, used XML when I'm importing Final Cut. In Time Bolt, now what you can do is, if you have multicam, you don't need to use the extension, you know, if you don't want to. You, what you can do is, you can, let's say I take this file over here, and I just Time Bolt it, and I scroll to the bottom, and I click on this button, XML sequence, not XML, XML sequence. Right. And what this does is, it basically creates a sequence of that clip. Instead of okay. now, what you can do is, you can add your file, that other file, but when you come back to the sequence, that stays the same. So in, instead of, I don't know if that will work for you, Probably won't, but this is like a, you know, work around to see if everything's, you know, in sync, if the files are already in sync. Okay. This works best if you have like one video source and one audio source, because then, then what you can do is just have all audio at the bottom and then you can turn, mute this off and then use this as your main editing uh, right. you know, timeline. For the most part, time bolt is working. One, one more issue that could happen is uh, one thing that could also cause that issue is if your uh, video is not all the way starting at zero. So the main video file that you have, it should be like hugging the, the starting point. It should start at zero. If you apply a J JSON to a file that starts like this, it's gonna, this is gonna be added time. Everything starts at zero. What, what, what you're saying sounds like a bug. I, I, I need the project or at least the media files, one or two files just like ch test on my own and like figure out where the issue is. I'll get that over to you um, within the next day or so. We're going to be moving to another hotel soon and hopefully I'll have yeah. better internet. So also the first issue that you said, the, the frame out of sync, the one frame out of sync, that has happened to me also before. And the only time that happens to me is when uh, the frame rates of each of the files are not, maybe one file is at 25 frames per second, the other file is at 29.97. 
the other files are 60. When it, they're like mismatching frame rates, it, it sometimes causes issues. So, What's the fix to that? Is there a fix to that? Or is it like, hey, I'm not going to have a fix to that? I haven't time, figured the it next out. Time, the only, yeah. the, the I, next I haven't time. figured it out yet. The only, re, the only way that I fixed the issues that I had was by... Uh, by re-encoding it, them all to like the same frame, frame rate. Like everything was 29.997. Something was 25, I just made it 29.97. If something was 60, I made it 29.97. Every, every, everything. And then... Yeah, and I don't want to get into a scenario of re-encoding stuff. No, I know, because um, they're big, big yeah. files. Yeah. Well, it's not about um, re-encoding. It's not about re... Like there's your project, right? Your first project. Yeah. It, like you probably... Do you make... This probably isn't going to be your only project that you make with Timebolt, right? So you're going to have multi-camera right. setups and other scenarios. What we're saying is, is that in the future, right? Make sure that your frame rates are all the same to eliminate yeah. the possibility of that happening. And if with this particular project, the only way, if there's not a bug, the only particular way to fix this would be to standardize the frame rates between your cameras with by re-encoding for this particular project. Right, right. And I'm just looking at the frame rates of their A and B cameras, their rock solids uh, match at 25 frames per second. Okay. And what cameras are they? How did you capture? Well, I, I don't actually do the uh, videography. It's done by somebody else in another country, but I believe they're using uh, a Sony. Oh, darn. I can't remember the model of camera, but it's a little DSLR. A ZB10 type thing, yeah. a, a model. It'll be whichever is the cheapest. This this is what this is what would be beneficial that we can get your problem fixed. Okay, figure out what the issue is and get it fixed because we're definitely interested. There's a, with Timebolt, there is a, uh, if you can record what your workflow looks like so that we when quinston has the files and he's adding it to you might be able to send us your workflow and we might go oh that's the problem right there it's not even a file okay. thing, right like like we're I'll, trying to I'll, predict I'll definitely do that. after it's already yeah, I'll throw together a, a little more so this is this and... what i would recommend what i'd recommend if you'd like if you'd like the quickest way to do to, to get us that information while you're in time bolt okay after you kind of have you can just open time bolt for here you just hit screen recorder you just hit screen recorder. You can enable, enable permissions. You, and the, right down here, you can just keep it standard, quick and small, or you can record in high quality for HD upload. You start recording, talk, show us the timeline. But more importantly, you're going to go into and show us what's going on inside Premiere, okay? Because you already, you already know what's going on here. Once you hit stop recording, it's going to ask you to save the video, okay? And it's going to auto kick into time bolt. Okay. From here, once it uh, once you save the pro and it auto kicks into time bolt, all you're gonna do do this because you like it. Hit activate turbo mode to speed up your rate of speech. It'll be set at 1.125 already. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is see this little button render and create an unlisted link. Even though you're gonna be providing us raw files, okay, this is actually uh, a really cool thing. You click you click this and it's just like sending it. It uh, sends a link to a web server. Okay, and unlisted web servers. If you ever have instances where you need to send quick one-to-one -one video messages, but you can't upload a file, and it's got to be a link, instead of going in and creating Dropbox, Loom, but watchable. Oh, awesome. Okay. Right? You can, if you have a Loom subscription, you don't need one of those either. You just hit render and create an unlisted link, or of course, you can add to render queue and render it right to your computer. But instead of a 100 megabit file, it's going to be 10, right? Nice. That's, that's really fast and easy to upload. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. The um, only and, other question I have for you is uh, right now on your screen, we, we've got the red bar that's up there and there are uh, edit marks on the red bar. See above your mouse, just a little, yeah. just a little white <laughs> edit marks. It shows where the edits uh, start and end. If I create an edit, I can't remember what the hot key is for it. So it's hidden by your... Um, if I create an edit and I do something, then I, I, I go back and I and I want to use that clip. How do I get rid of the edit mark? Because what I'm finding is if I make the clip green versus being red, uh, it still applies an edit inside Premiere. Now I can join the edit. I can do a join through cut, but you know, who wants to do that all day, right? Yeah, there's there's no join at the moment. The only way I think is by undoing it. But you uh, can one, add that to the list. One or two edits in advance, right? There's no undo. Yeah, there's an undo it's no, just here. that there's right, right now you see uh right at the 10 30 mark you uh oh how did you get rid of that undo just undo so make make an edit there and then just advance a little bit make an edit there how do i keep that edit that you just did but lose the other one lose the first one no there's no way to do that there's no right. there's no join in time right now there's just uh, the, the there's undo. problem that we have right now is that there will be two edits in premiere when i bring that in right yeah we'll add that to the road roadmap we'll make sure that there's a join feature in there and, and it's not a big deal or anything like that yeah. it's just one of those things that just kind of annoys you at no, it makes sense yeah Oh, are you saying like, are you saying like a join this? Like, oh, no. once you make an edit, it's all green, right? If you make an edit, if you press S, how do you join the two greens to remove that edit? Why would if I make you... an edit there in the first place if I needed two greens? If I needed this whole No, you don't, you don't need two greens. Now you made an edit and 
let's say you made an edit somewhere else and you don't have an undo anymore. Then how do you join those two? How do I join these two? How would I, I, I don't know. You'd have so to right, because right there's, now, there's no feature for that. Right now where you're about to. Well, I'm not trying, I'm trying to understand like before we. So let's say we, we've done a whole bunch of editing now and we, we're going back and we're reviewing and right now where your mouse is, I decide to, 20 minutes later after I've made this edit that I want to keep that instead of lose that piece. And right? you're so saying to... doing this exactly. is still a cut. Is now this still I, a now cut I've got in... some edit points inside that green segment. Okay, because there's still a cut. Even though there's nothing That's in right. Premiere, it's going to show this as two clips or three clips. That's correct. Yeah, three clips. So this doesn't come out in Premiere as one clip. It comes out as three. Okay. I see what you're saying. Doug Quinston, I'll test that in uh, DaVinci Resolve for you as well. See if those cuts will stay there. Okay. I, I think that they, they do. If, if they stay in Premiere, I think they probably should. Because it's, it's a JFON still... file, I would bet that it's also going to happen inside uh, Resolve. Yeah, yeah, DaVinci. Well, this is this is well, this is kind of the this is kind of the issue that we're going to run into because we have punch. So sometimes I'll be doing this. I hit split. I can punch in here, right? And then right. in the same flow, why well, wouldn't I can change unpunch? Yeah, unpunch or go to a different even. Right, right, right. Why well, But if these were joined together, that would not do. We'll we'll punch. figure that out. That is just logistics. Yeah, yeah. we can just okay. uh, join them together and give them the same punch like an average punch or give them like one of them. Maybe the first one will be kept. Maybe they will both delete the punch. We'll keep do something like that. Honestly, guys, it's not a showstopper or anything like that. It's just one of those things that would be nice only because it's kind of annoying when you got a dozen of them, right? Or two dozen. But, or you've edited a show and you've got like 700 or 800 cuts in it. 20% of them are all. Do you use Umcheck? No, I don't use Umcheck. I, I just manually remove them. Is there a particular reason why you do that? Uh, because my client is too cheap to pay for it. Uh, I see, I see. And I'm, and I'm not going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, they'll pay for the hours, right? No, that, that that makes that makes sense. It, what is it? Ten cents for every? I know, totally, it makes sense if they're going to pay you to to do that. But if if you wanted to, it's ten cents for every. Uh, 50 cents for every 10 minutes. I know you're talking to the Time Bolt team here, but we do have the best um check on the market. We Tell me what, what happens with the um check. What is it doing? Is it just simply. Um, let me show you. Can I show this? I want to show a new, new feature. Or is it too. actually making an edit? Sure. Doug, let me take this. I, I'm, sure. I'm going to show something. I, I did make a video on this, but I just want to show it on the office hours. Now, this is a video which I took from. I was working on this in the afternoon. This is a video of a motorcycle review. Okay. From a channel called MCN. I just wanted to see how this video would perform in time. Well, then I just dropped it in. So if you see, brace your ears, it's going to be an engine sound. It's an engine sound. We, I can't hear it. Can't hear it? Oh no. My God. I didn't share my screen. The engine sound, and then this is like where the bank. presenter is talking. Uh, we're here to ride. Right. When you run Omcheck on this, I already have the transcriptions. Usually you just start the audio transcription, pay for it, and it'll be done. I already have it. I'm going to select the one that I have. I open it up and now what happens is all of the ums, ahs, ands are selected. There is a list at the top, which you can add more, more stuff to. Let's say I want to add something like, uh, maybe this welcome to MC. I can just comma welcome to MC. And when I type that entire phrase, the entire phrase gets highlighted. And when I turn off that, those words, that, that entire section will be deleted. In our competitors' sites, you have a very, you have a fixed, finite list of ums and ahs, and they're typically by themselves. We've noticed that they're typically done in combination, um, and so, um, which also makes our um check inherently more accurate. And you can yeah, add your own that. unique word tick phrase without being charged extra, right? Yeah, if I just remove this, like maybe I say, I did delete this whole thing, right? And I, so it's now clear. Everything is clean. It's just transcription. I say, I don't want the um word. So now when I type this out, the um word is highlighted and when I turn it off, it'll be gone. Now, sometimes you don't want to do just but because if you do but, even the but in, in, the, in the middle of a sentence will be cut out. So you don't want to do right. uh, just but, you want to do um but. Um, but. Yep. Yeah. Right. So now um but will be selected together. Makes sense. Right. So now when I have all these ums there, I'm just going to click on this button, turn off selected words because those are the ones that are selected. And now when I go through, uh, let's see over here. So this is an, and, uh, you're saying and, and was also like a this one. Um, That's an um. Um, but that was also an um. um and it, that was also an um. And that was an and. Basically means. applying um, an edit there. It's not ducking it down or. Uh, correct. Or, it's yeah. It's basically editing, basically removing that cut. Okay. Uh, and the talk ZX6. Um, um, and yeah. Now one more thing that we just added recently. So now this is on 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 check right. You can basically transcribe the file and then you can select which words you want to remove and then you can just turn them off. Now we have added a new feature. It's called merge detections in transcription with time. So what this does is essentially now as, as you can see, Time Bolt detected the sound of the engine, right? But the engine is not really a voice. It's like background noise. You don't want that in your final edit. Obviously, the reviewer wants the sound of the engine. But you know, if you're editing a video where you're blogging, let's say you're in a stadium, you're you know at an airport, there's background noise in a car. Motorhead, in, yeah, a in a car. In a car. In those cases, Timebolt will not be able to determine what is like a sound and what is a voice. We thought, okay, what if you already have the information? What if we can transfer the transcription information and basically enhance the cuts and, and remove the background noise which already exists? 
which Steinbolt has detected. Now, these cuts are accurate. Transcription cuts are not as accurate as, as uh, audio, audio signature cuts are. So that's why you can't just use transcriptions directly. That's why we are like creating a hybrid sort of model. Like Steinbolt will create the, create the base layer and the transcriptions will be on top. Now, when I click this gum check and I use this merge detections in transcription, the engine sound is gone. Now, everything that is there is pure uh, voice without the ums. As you can see, this one is, um, there might be some more engine sound. There's, there's engine sounds well, gone. There'll be engine sounds when he's talking. Like I, I, I'll show that example also. There's one more example where, uh, let's say you're a moto vlogger, you ride your bike around, you have like a GoPro and you're talking to the, what happens in, th in that case? Um, in this case, I'm just gonna blow through it. No point wasting time. In this case, the talking starts here. Welcome back to the channel. But while he's talking, the engine Engine sound is already also heard. He starts talking, there's engine sound, he stops talking, engine sound, he starts talking, engine sound. What happens in this case? I click on uncheck and I click on the merge detections. And now what happens is only the parts where he's talking is, is available. And I What's going this. on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am finally riding. Princeton, yeah, I on, apologize, TJ. man. You're scary. That, this is this is awesome. This is really good stuff. I thought so. <laughs> Call him the wizard. So now it's it's basically you are riding your bike, you're talking. And you can only see where the cuts are essentially. So basically, when, normally what you would have to do is you'd have to go through the entire video and like listen to the engine, the sound of the engine. Then oh, now he starts talking. Oh, so it's a cut here. And then you start hearing because even time bolt the base la layer doesn't do this because it's not silent kicking. And, and and what I would recommend, what I would recommend doing is like this is like a high impact. Like like he's still riding a bike, right? It's still kind of cool watching somebody go through and fly on a damn bike. What I would do if I were him and I was vlogging on a bike like this. Now I go down to fast forward silences and I would do I would do something like fast forward anything that uh that isn't registered as speech like fast and do it by like two seconds right fast forward cuts longer than two or three seconds but then when he's and he's actually speaking when he stops talking you'll just see the bike kind of speed up yeah nobody still, watches he, that dog i'm sorry but you you're not keep, you're I not like, in the <laughs> I, I like it and you don't have to mute it and you don't have to mute it either right yeah. but that's why you're watching is is uh, uh yeah bike in action one that's the that, that's the interesting thing like where the cuts are uh, great with silence that's great but in situations like these where you just can't have like clean cuts with time time bolt with silences you need something more that's mm -hmm. where this is this a layer gonna, on top of the base time bolt version yeah we're going to be the official editor for the saint for the uh, blues angels that's what we're going to be that's what, that's what this for, <laughs> for blue angels right along right that's that's they, it. do they do a lot of talking while they're flying around yeah i mean i can't wait to tell my uh, f22 friend i was just I, I swear to god my i call him my best friend but just be, he's a uh, He's an F-22 pilot. I was just talking to him. Yes, I was just talking to him yesterday. And I was just like, uh, then Quinston sends, sends me this this morning. This will be interesting. I can't wait to send this over to McDonnell Douglas. It makes complete sense. They got, they do. They, they record themselves talking inside cockpits. And oh, wow. What a nice way to cut that video down. And well, I guess you would have to share it because it is transcribed uh, as, as far as with like transcription models. Uh, Tom, do you have any additional questions? No, that's about it. I'll um, I'll get some stuff over to you guys as soon as I awesome. can. We'll, we'll take it from there. My hope is that it's uh, a bug between the, uh, the the keyboard and the chair rather than a bug with the software. And, and you're just a, like, you're, you have, you're using automatically detect decibel level right like you're you're doing i i have done that in most scenarios what i'm doing is i'm actually generating an audio track myself because sometimes their audio is just so bad that <laughs> okay. the, the time bolt doesn't even have a hope in, in trying to do anything with it and and you've got your left padding and right padding either where anywhere from like i haven't what i what i've adjusted is filter below sound level and db i haven't really played with left padding or right padding Perfect. only because in the tutorial it said don't touch this yeah you know, no even <laughs> yeah. People like you may as well put a big red button on it right and tell people not to push it it's because they orig originally think they're like oh that's how i keep from cutting words on or out when it's all right here and that's that's yeah. we quinston perfected the math on this we do now recommend that you go into settings and make sure that automatically detect decibel level decibel levels is selected okay because right. it'll get it down we used to say my Minus 30 to minus 40 dB. Now it calculates it right to the Nats ass. Uh, D, do you have any additional questions? No, oh, I think it sounds like it'll be better than using the script since I have to go over it all the time anyway. D, for your benefits, I, I switched over to Time Bolt from Autopod D script. I found it was just a big waste of time. And that, uh, I, I have so much to say. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, can you restart that? We might want to use this for a short. That's another, that's <laughs> another office hour right on top of it. <laughs> I think I just got myself a one-year free subscription here. You did auto you used Autopod in the script? I used Autopod for two months, and I just got so frustrated with it, annoyed with it. I, I ended up in the last month only using it to do uh, a resize and a reframe of shorts. 
only to find out, because I, I hadn't bothered to look, right? And, I, and, and again, I just got annoyed and I looked, only to find out that Premiere does it automatically for you anyway, so you don't really need Autopod for that. Yeah, and I tried to uh, script for a couple of weeks and Dude, I just hated I'm, it. I'm I telling just, you, I'm, there was a... I, I'm finding Time Bolt is a lot more useful than Autopod. Autopod misses more than it, yeah. uh, than it hits, which cam is going to be the priority on screen. Now, most of the YouTubers that I'm working with, it's literally cam A, cam B, cam A, cam B, cam A, cam B. It's, it's easy enough just to batch select and just enable or disable. Yeah. Do y'all have some type of little, like a check sheet, like a workflow or something like that? Like, okay, <clears throat> you're saying, you know, first do this and then check that. Yes. If you go, if, if you go to our homepage, okay, you're going to go to the Zoom. You're, you'll be using, a, I don't know exactly what, it, it's the same type of thing as like Zoom, right? Like we're, I don't know if you're going to be switching cameras or if there's multi-camera or stuff like that. You typically want to do all your camera switching before you get into Time Bolt. Right. If you have a multi-camera setup, it's also just as easy to rip off an audio only WAV file of a multi-cam setup and bring that into Time Bolt and just cut up your audio file. Well, what, I didn't understand the question. Is that what she asked? What's the question? The workflow. Is, is there a place we can find a workflow? And she's making either Zoom or a Riverside-like recording. I, I think we have a tutorial about Riverside, right? We, we don't We don't have a Riverside tutorial yet. We do have one for Zoom. If you go if you go to the homepage of our website, there's- Let a me link it. I'll, I'll link it in the description. Let me find it. Basically, right now for shorts, my husband uses OBS and he just kind of records. And yeah, he edits, edits it down in ScreenFlow and then drops it over to Dropbox box to me and then i use descript uh, along with audio and video library to drop it on youtube export directly to youtube from there i was just wondering if like uh Doug, i can't find it soon it's it's on the, it's, are you talking about yeah, shorts practices or something no well you were saying like for instance uh set the db level to something you recommend out of something or other like there were some yeah. things you talked about in here that yes it, if if you get if you get the updated time bolt that that setting's going to be the setting's going to be there and we'll be making this video available for uh, for our youtube channel so you'll be able to go back and watch this and pull off any additional information that you may have missed there's but there on our on our homepage is a zoom workflow and you got to set up the preferences and then the steps to auto detect silences then the run up check and then how to sculpt this is what i wanted thank you you know, how to do chapter markers and stuff like that uh, within it. All right. There's also sections inside the help. So if you go into Time Bowl, there's a help section where you can even, which will be link you to documentation, to features. If you want to find like a specific feature, you can go into uh, Time Bowl. In the top bar, there's a there's a button called help. And in help, you'll have a bunch of like documentation information, features, o overview. You can click those buttons and go in there. Okay. Which, is a, which, which has a drop down. And in that drop down, you can find buttons to like documentation and feature overview, help and support. We do have a new blog. I need to get that uh, marked up there we do have a new blog post on how to create shorts with cap cut okay I, if i were you i just gave you a straight personalized rundown of your workflow i just wait until this video is i'll, I'll go ahead and get this thing posted up pretty quick and on the next day or two and you can have this video well, i'll send like you the i'll about. send you the unlisted link d can you can you put your email in here just so i've got in the chat and and same with same with you, Tom. Can you put your email in the chat? Just I think I emailed you the other day, uh, Doug at, if that's valid, so I think you got it, and I'll just send you a reminder tonight. Um, thanks very much. I really appreciate yeah. all the information and all the help, and it's a pleasure to meet everybody here. TJ, D, it's a pleasure to meet folks as well. D, I wish you the best of luck on getting your hubby's uh, videos all done and up online and <laughs> keep them happy. Um, I'm going to call it a night. We're going to head off for dinner uh, near a beach. That's awesome, awesome, Tom. <laughs> Beautiful, man. I love the ocean, dude. Great job. That's awesome. Stay uh, safe out oh, there. Thanks a lot. I'll follow up with you guys uh, later tonight. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks, sir. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. What are you saying, Quinston? You want to keep this in the meeting? Oh, uh, I... Okay, perfect. Could. And the other, only other question I had was I was using the point 0.7 yesterday, and I noticed in some of your demos today, Doug, you had point 0.8, and then I just got an update from you guys for point it's 0.9. Point nine. Yeah, it's point 0.9. Is it open? I can't see, your, see it on the screen. Can you open the task manager also? Yeah, or? I, actually, I actually had that open before. Let me get rid of this GPU running right now. And again, it could be a little heavy because I'm running OBS right now as well. Yeah, it's already... Uh, let, 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 let's see what happens. I'm not sure what so, this... So can you take a longer video? Maybe 20 seconds would be better. And just make... And is the GPU you think check checkbox sorry i got three screens here so i got to bring everything over just to show yeah, it makes was all this stuff okay for you because i know we have this thing we have yeah, that, that that's fine i i just want the the gpu thing okay render with cuda supported gpu correct okay done so now i just make sure i see the task manager okay cool now you can uh, press the render key you can add to render queue and just render it out if this works it means your capture would work also so just do this right here just add to render queue and just render it out okay your gpu spiked right right there did you see that it so works I, I, it looks like it looks using it and stuff that's, yeah, yeah that's not 
that's the spike that happened over there. Yeah. Okay, and like I said, this thing is this thing is heavy right now because OBS is running in the uh, background. CP is also. <laughs> and this guy, this guy's uh, for some reason is a tough one to use. Yeah, with the new version of Timebolt, the point eight and point nine version, if you record a video with Timebolt, like if you're using Timebolt Capture. What you can do is you can turn on the CUDA uh, setting in your CUDA checkbox in your settings. And when you're optimizing the video, instead of using CPU, it will use a GPU to optimize that file, which is which, which means the rendering will be much faster. And the reason the reason why I'm asking, I asked for that is because like I'll be using DaVinci Resolve. I'll drop it in after Time Bolt does this thing. But he's he's also a, a CPU pig as well to, to use to use the uh, GPU. GPU as much as possible. And then now, as you can see, uh, now that I told the laptop and the BIOS not to use the onboard one. Now you only see these two options, power saving Makes sense. and high yeah. performance, which is the NVIDIA one. But with Timebolt, right? Timebolt doesn't, uh, Timebolt defaults to the GPU on your, on which is external to Intel. It doesn't, it doesn't use the onboard GPU because it can't. It only uses a CUDA supported GPU. If it hasn't, if it knows that it has an Intel GPU, it doesn't use the GPU. It, it switches to CPU. And I know, I know the GPU that I have in this laptop is not the greatest, but it's, it's something, something. Oh, it's much better than most of the GPUs. <laughs> it's a 3050. It's, it's great. Customers on the call, Kristen, you are absolutely scary. When you were doing the sound, oh, I'm going to keep the bike sound when he's talking, but shut it off when he's not there. That's, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> you're just crazy, man. You're just crazy. Well, that's, that's, nice. that's going to be all good stuff there. I sent you an email just real quick. Is that a virtual background or a real one? No, it's my shit old apartment. <laughs> okay, because because I like the I like the lighting in the back. Look, look at my lighting. My lighting is like terrible. Dude, I can't wait. The new lighting is going to be awesome. It'll be like, or, oh, I'll, then I'm going to say it's virtual. Right. Yeah, this this is the lighting that I like the the screen that I'm sharing. I like that's, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the, the lighting. That, lighting. So that's in the, that's in Charleston, Rhode Island. Since I got a PC user on on here as well, when it comes to capturing system audio on a PC, is it going to require that that we need multiple audio capture options? in for a pc in i don't think I, I don't think it's supported at all yeah, we need to get like a lot of changes done uh to get that support i i don't even think it's possible i thought it was easier i don't understand your question doug okay so system audio system audio like like we're trying to build a capture tool for for b2b for b2b players that you, you gotta have gotta have to be able to capture in a certain quality and you gotta be able to capture your system audio right like like in order for it to be a viable tool for you to like go out and say hey look you don't need any other capture tool because you don't want to have three different capture tools right <laughs> like and with if, if it's a if it's a feature like a system audio i think that it's something that we that we look into right now with with i can do an aggregate device inside of a mac macbook and capture my system audio and my mic audio okay in mac and use it as the aggregate device inside timebolt a capture but with a pc you're not able to how do you capture your system audio like if you're given a demonstration and you got to play a video on your machine how does that audio come through oh it's it's not about the machine it's about timebolt's underlying infrastructure the platform that timebolt is built on doesn't support system audio like o obs would because obs is built in c++ i guess my question is how would i capture system audio? Audio using OBS in a, in a PC. OBS, it doesn't matter. You just add a display a capture chain. and it just comes a in. A display directly. capture. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, not a display capture so much. It would be a computer output capture that um, you would use. Yeah. You, could, input you, can drop audio. Your, you can drop your uh, sound that you want. Like for, for instance, if I could share another screen, you can you can see with OBS running and stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm capturing my laptop display. I got my microphone and this computer output capture. I'm using main because as I got this Roadcaster. Roadcaster yeah. has, has a thing called chat main. And then if you if you look at the camera, if you plug in a second USB-C cable, you can have a secondary one. So you can have three inputs coming in here. So depending on how you want to do it, you could have you could have separate inputs uh, for each one of these things for a, a Windows PC. This this is what I'm saying. If you're forget what you got right now, okay? If you're doing if 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 you have to do a tutorial and there's a video in that tutorial that's happening on your screen and you've got your own mic audio, you got a video yeah. in the tutorial, you need to capture that system audio so that when you're, hey, this is the video, you play the video, it doesn't come through on your mic. You're not holding up your mic going, oh, here's the audio that's playing in the video, right? You go through your system audio. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm asking is that there's no, and, and on a Mac, it's about putting aggregate devices. You aggregate your the system audio plus your mic audio and it outputs as a single output and use that output as like one thing inside Timebolt. That's how you can capture your system audio pure i'm trying to see is it a matter of like descript has where they have hey you can have two different audio sources right like if it's a matter of putting in a secondary audio source into capture 
that would work on a PC. I need to figure that out. I haven't, I, I, I did try it, but it, like I checked a lot of forums and they said that they don't have, like Electron doesn't have system audio. Uh -huh. that the Electron JS platform doesn't have system audio as an API. I'll, I'll recheck it if it's, uh, if it's possible. I'm just trying, because I've never, we've, this is kind of the first time ever, like with Timebolt, that we've had a disparity between the two machines, right? Because I've been able to- I mean, it's not a disparity, right? Because you can't record uh, on Mac also, you can't record system audio directly. You have to create an aggregate device, which is not a Timebolt thing. It's a Mac thing. Ag aggregate device is not a Timebolt. Uh, feature C correct and, and even so it's if, not a disparity even if it was we yeah. could not have a secondary audio you can't just say system audio into fucking time bolt yeah, plus audio. even if we had two different options right i guess that's what i'm that's what i'm asking is there a technique inside i don't know i love I, like i i did try it last time when i was working on capture i couldn't figure it out maybe because if, if it is if, if it's something similar like set up a aggregate device even though i know it's not set up an aggregate device and it'll be a new input that you just use as an input inside time but we wouldn't need a second that's why that's why when i look at this when i looked at the scripts recorder and they've got m multiple audio inputs possibilities that's what i don't know if they're accounting but is system audio one of them for I'm, the i'm sure it's got to be can, can i ask you guys a question I, I noticed you guys when you guys doug is sharing a screen then oh i gotta share the audio quinston takes over and he says oh i gotta share the audio is that a, is that a mac thing <laughs> no that's a, that's because zoom is built zoom. in a different platform built in c plus plus Okay, could, C could, sharp, I, yeah, dot net, etc. Could I try something right now, real quick? And let, let me show you. I'm going to share a screen. We're going to we're going to go to one of my one of my favorite uh, my favorite channels here, and, and and then let me let me know if you guys hear this, okay? Because I'm not going to be sharing anything with Zoom or anything like that. I'm just going to welcome click on to this. Timebolt Office Hours on October 5th. Yeah, we can hear it. You are okay, and you w hear me stepping over it and stuff, right? Andre, TJ, yeah, we're here to check okay. your questions. Answer then, I, then I, I guess I still don't understand what you guys are trying to accomplish. No, like system audio. This this. Audio well, this, will not be this, this video that I just showed you is running off of my system audio. No, what I'm saying, uh, what what audio is coming into Zoom? Like, what's the name of the? Well, well, in, Zoom in, in Zoom, what's the microphone's name? Like, well, that 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 would be that would be uh, main. But I think I'm cheating because I got the Rodecaster Pro on me. You have basically system audio goes into Rodecaster Pro, then Rodecaster Pro combines both of those things and then right. shoots it back into your audio channel. Right. That's why I have the ability to... Um... We're, we're talking about... Uh, what Doug is saying is that uh, he wants it to be available at a software level. Ba basically, you got a laptop, you got you got the onboard mic and your headphones, and that's all you want Correct. to be able to use with it. None of this extra junk. Okay. Yeah, no, without any external hardware. Yeah, but, it, but, I, but I don't have a PC. That's why I'm like... I... I'm, I'm, I maybe just be talking way out of my league here, and I'm just that's what I'm saying. You can be like Doug, shut the fuck up. That's not true. You can't do that with a PC, right? And I think that's I think I understand. No, you, you can. Of, of, of course you can. It's just that you have to well, use a third party application. Yeah, which... third party application. I thought it was easier yeah. than a Mac. I thought the Mac was the. I thought the PC was the one that was easy, and it was like here's a system audio without any other extension. No, they're telling you in Descript. Okay, just say they're telling you in Descript to go download Audacity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what yeah. you do. You use third party applications to do it because it's, it's... on a PC. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to have that kind of set up already just like aggregate device it's not going to be like something new the thing is that it depends on how your application is built now with time bolt i'm the only guy we're building it i don't have like a 10 person team that i can tell go write like twenty thousand lines of c plus plus i can't do that it's not possible if so, i do that time bolt wouldn't even exist I, I chose a platform that supported my skill set which with which i could work and we built time bolt and that platform inherently has limitations it's not magic it has limitations and one of those limitations is that it can't access and that's that that's that's that. <laughs> uh, but, but just, yeah. just... I, I, I know I understand I understand the other ones are having the exact same problem. And what I'm saying Yeah, is, because they're also using the same platform. Exactly. And the exactly. the fucked up part is Doug that I am one person and they are a whole fucking company. <laughs> Dude, I, like like that's the I'm thing. Not... It's insane. I, I don't even understand like I get it. Like they're fucking funded multi millions of dollars, right? And I you're one person and like we're it's really an interesting proposition. So, but, but that's what, what I just need to understand question? conceptually is that Electron, with a PC yes. with a PC, you are going to the chances that somebody's just going to be the first time capturing something for the very first time, hopefully it'll be eventually, right? But if I know that, like, hey, look, in order to use system audio with a PC, you've got to install some other software. No matter if you're using Timebolt, some other recorder, some other recorder over here, you've got to create this new input that's going to come from some other place. That's what I was, that's what I needed to understand on a PC level. It sounds like that the... Exactly. In Mac, the, the thing with Mac is that Apple has already created a solution for this problem, right? Apple has created something called aggregate device, which is an OS level solution for this problem. Windows has not. And but you still Windows need has... Soundflower or fucking... 
that you yeah, exactly. Need. Soundflower is what is the solution to this problem, essentially. So I can point people there. Yeah. Third party, you can use third party software. I, I didn't say Soundflower because I don't know, so many of them. But the other one you just named, like using a, 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 a Audacity to route it through. And you call it computer audio, right? And then and then yeah. computer audio becomes. <laughs> now, the thing is, is that I, I think that's where, uh, where they have computer audio on one and then mic audio on the other. I think that's where the two, that's why they have them. I, that's, that's we'll, we'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll try to use both of them. That's where it is. Like if you want to like support OBS, for example, OBS is built like ground up in C++. Like that is like straight up, like low level hardware inter interfacing it directly has access to all the APIs that .NET provides at the bottom. So for, for OBS to do that is very easy because OBS, I mean, easy, relatively easy, but still has access. With the platform we are using, um, it, it just doesn't have that access. It doesn't have access to the low level hardware systems. You just can't like pull that audio through, through, through the mic. And, and if it is, if it is as easy as adding a audio input like we don't deal with the stuff however they set it up through audacity or whatever it's yeah. that if you have a thing and you follow these steps and you have something called computer audio you can select that along with your mic audio and that could both come into time bolt but like that yeah, would... if yeah i can set, set that up that, that that is possible i can add another input source and that can just like uh be like overlaid on top of each other that, 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 that would be that, awesome fine. that would that would be awesome and then that way we've got <laughs> that on parody and then the, then the last thing to get on that on parody would be the hd capture i don't know what you mean by hd capture because uh, the native capture on windows is actually really good i, I don't if you have seen pc capture but it's really good i haven't i haven't it's TJ really good. hasn't complained about it it's really good it's not it's not like mac it's it's really good tj are, like on those capture when and you get stuck no i'm i'm okay i just i like i said i got obs running and he had he had the uh oh, yeah. camera and then i just fired up time bolt again and i got but the the quality of the pc the quality of the pc capture like with with mac you can tell like there's you want it like that right the little the degradation that's why you end up with a 10 megabit versus 100 megabit perfect for the scenarios but i got a choice between the two it sounds like with the pc we don't have a choice but it captures in a decent quality when you upload that the raw capture from uh from time bolt onto youtube is it like 1080 is it like 4k is it like what depends on how, how big your screen is if your screen is 1080p it's 1080p if your screen okay. is 720p right. it's 720 if okay. your screen is 4k it's 4k capture in full depth full right. depth it's, it's very high resolution i don't think i, I don't okay. think okay. capture quality is an issue on pc that's just yeah. okay see i need that's why i needed to just like really get into it and jam in and and have these discussions not because like i'm concerned that we don't now i know and i'll be able to direct people yeah because so one of the reasons why uh one of the reasons why apple the the capture the quick and standard capture on apple is not good um because uh, electron is not given direct access so what you have to do is you have to use a library a low-level library inside of uh, time bolt to get access to something called aperture aperture is like recording controller module for capture in we have integrated that that's where the high quality recording on mac comes from okay. but that, that's why there are two of them because the first one just does surface level recording and the second one goes deep into like the mac ecosystem and the mac api and like well let me go ahead and close this thing down and quinson i do have still have another question yeah i wanted to talk about marketing uh tj thanks thanks for very much your time today uh, joining us and that's it for time bolt office hours on october 12 2023 don't forget to forget to hit the like button subscribe and of course the notification bell when we go live and we're out of time thank you